Hello and welcome to update video number two for the design of a 250 pound combat robot. Um, so if you saw the first video, you know that I am uh, still pursuing the crazy scorpion looking design where the robot is split into two halves. It has a pivot point in the middle and the idea is to close both halves of the robot around an enemy robot and kind of trap them and then hopefully move them around the arena. I recognize that this is uh, not the ideal robot combat design or combat robot design. Um, the ideal combat robot has uh, you know low surface area, something like Minotaur, where it's very small and compact, so that you have um, less surface area to armor, and you can have really thick, robust armor because you don't have kind of a lot of volume to uh, protect. Um, and this design is split into two halves, so there's a lot more surface area you have to protect. It has a failure point right in the middle, that pivot point can't break or the locomotion won't work. Um, and so I recognize the uh, inherent disadvantages of this design and I'll show you uh, with some of the CAD that I've done, I'm really trying to make every attempt uh, I can to make it a little bit less risky. So I'm using no brushless motors, I'm going with kind of established, um, well-proven motors and speed controllers. Um, I'm also trying to make redundant systems, so that pivot point in the middle, it's absolutely going to have two motors or, or some sort of redundant system so that things can fail and that pivot point will still be able to work. Um, also the rotary walker uh, mechanisms, I'm going to try to make it so that if one of those uh, wheels, uh, if, if one of those wheels jams up or if the rotary walker bars are jammed, the wheels will still be able to spin. Um, so I think I'm going to have to have some sort of clutch mechanism in between the rotary walker bars and the wheel in order to make it so that it's not like all fail, to, you know, it doesn't all fail at once. So that if the front of the robot just gets thrown away, the back wheel will still rotate fine. Um, also it's going to be invertible, um, I know that right off the bat. Um, and uh, hopefully I'm able to kind of arrive at something that still retains my kind of crazy design um, that's cool and I think will look cool on TV and I think will help get me through ABC's uh, submission process while still making a robot that uh, doesn't have just one or two major points of failure and one motor dies and then the whole thing doesn't drive. So I'm trying to find somewhat of a middle ground. I'm thinking I'm going to end more on the artsy side, um, but that's kind of just what I do. So I have enough of the robot CAD done that I have a basic idea of what it's going to like way I, I kind of know how screwed I am so um, I'll be able to show you that and uh, show you where it's heading Ta-da! this is what I have so far you can see how it swings open here and this is a large robot for size comparison the cylinder up front is the diameter of ice waves blade and the rectangle in the top right is the same size as Minotaur so this is about the size of Mega Tento um, this is probably a little too big I might have to scale it down in order to armor it uh, but it is absolutely large enough to surround and clamp around an enemy robot. And uh, I've, I think that it should be able to still drive straight even when fully clamped. I think that there'll be some wheel scrub, but when it's a little bit too far open or a little bit uh, you know, fully closed, it should still be able to drive around. Uh, there will be wheel scrub in those positions, but I think that'll be okay. Um, on the right side of the robot, you can see my original rotary walker uh, bars up here. They are flat and I, I just assumed they'd be made out of like flex, flat plexiglass or something. And then over on the left I have the new rotary walker set up where it's carbon rods, quarter inch carbon rods. And I needed something that could take a lot of damage but still spring back to the original place so the mechanism wouldn't jam up. And I figured carbon rods would be a good way of doing that. So four out of five of these rods can just totally get broken and it should still spring back to place. Now these little red things down here hold magnets, uh, they're little leaf springs because the rods will only contact the floor six times out of a revolution. They're kind of ridiculous, they probably won't work that well, uh, but they hold magnets and they're there for now. Um, it gives a kind of use for the rotary walker bars. Here's the mechanism that controls the pivot point. There is uh, a motor on each side and a chain drive on the top as well as a chain drive on the bottom. This is the uh, furthest closed position here, um, so it can kind of clamp quite quite tightly. And I'll show you the fully open position. I'm a little worried about this. I'm not sure if it'll 
crab in as uh, large of an arc as I'd like. In this position, it'll definitely crab in an arc sideways, but the radius isn't going to be too large. Um, so I've got to kind of figure out some geometry maybe. Uh, kind of disappointed by that. I didn't really do it. It's hard, it's hard to find a way to get it to easily clamp around an opposing robot but still do the crab sideways thing effectively. My first idea for the center pivot point was to use one inch square uh, steel tubing, but I decided that wouldn't be robust enough, so here's the sketch for using aluminum, water jetted aluminum to build the center pivot. And then here's the CAD for that. Right now this is done in 3 8 thick aluminum, which is what Bite Force uses. Also right now there are no internal bracings. Uh, I think that once I add the batteries and receiver and all the electronics to the structure, I'll add bracing. Um, and then the top and body bottom panels have this large radius, and that radius is larger than the radius of the sprocket, and it's designed to kind of be a bumper or a protection for that chain. So if there's kind of an impact against the wall, the chain uh, sprocket doesn't take that force. Okay, so here I've calculated some of the weights of the components that I've drafted so far. The frames for the side uh, wheel housings are made out of chromoly steel. Those work out to 20 pounds a piece. The uh, aluminum panels that are the motor mounts work out to 4 pounds a piece. And that gives, with no armor, uh, 64 pounds per side, uh, which is terrible. Then we get over to the aluminum uh, pivot point here, and the uh, two motors there are 20 pounds. So if you add those two together, the two sides plus the center, with no armor and no electronics, I only have 45.5 pounds to spare, which is terrible, and the whole thing needs scaled to different size, and a lot of things are going to have to change. So we will see what gives.